Hello, thank you for tuning into this presentation today. My name is Daniel Lindbergh. I'm currently a student at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. Today I'm going to talk about client server systems and web based databases. So let's get started. Now, a client server system basically refers to a two tiered system the client being the front end processor and the server being the back end processor. An advantage to a client server system is that it has improved security. I'm going to talk about a couple of the disadvantages now. A major disadvantage to a client server system could be the potential bottlenecking of traffic on a congested network. What this means is that if there are many different clients on the network and they're all making requests to the server at the same time, this could cause the network server to slow down to the point of crashing. And once a network has crashed, it is down and then it cannot service any of its clients any longer. And this could be a potential problem. I also want to talk about the possible distributed denial of service attack. Now this is the same scenario as the bottlenecking. Uh, what this is, is it's an intentional attack from a group of clients all sending requests to the server. And what they do is they keep sending these requests until the server can no longer respond and ultimately crashes. Another disadvantage in a client server system could be something called a single point of failure. And ultimately, one single failure could lead to many failures. What I mean by this is you have many clients that are accessing the same server. For example, instead of each client using their own database, they're all relying on a single database for their information. Now, if that single database were to crash, a single point of failure would cause all failures. An example could be a large corporation using one database for their customers information same with a bank or even an email server and also ultimately this single point could be more vulnerable because it's the only point okay let's talk about backing up data when should you back up your data I think it's always a good idea to back up your data. That being said, I think it's even more appropriate to back up your data whenever you're on a client server system. An example would be a large enterprise. If they lose their customers data that could be fatal to their success. Personal data is just as important if, it, if you're the person that's lost all of your work and personal items. All right, let's talk a little bit about scalability. I think scalability ultimately comes down to computing power. I'm going to reference, though, what Philip Pratt and Joseph Adamski had to say about scalability in their text. They write that scalability is the ability of a computer system to continue to function well as utilization of the system increases. I think that really sums it up well. I think sometimes with a system, everything may run well on a small level, but as that workload increases, how does that system scale? Another example would be a simple algorithm that takes in numbers and sorts them. Ten numbers wouldn't be an issue. The algorithm would run, even if the algorithm had many different computations. When n equals 10, it runs pretty well. When you scale that n up to 10 million, 
you can see how it's going to take much longer to sort those numbers. All right, let's talk about the back end processor. All right, this back end processor, this goes back to the client server system. The back end processor is a computer and it's going to be on the server side of the client server system. An example of this, this could be a, a simple SQL database server. The back end gets queried and sends data to the client or the front end. Another example of this could be an application server located on the back end server side. The client can modify and add functions to the server, allowing these functions to be run in conjunction with the database. Any results then are delivered to the front end. The front end processor, also part of the client server system. Instead of the server side though, the front end processor works as a part of the client side. An example of this could be any kind of a web browser interpreting HTML code or JavaScript code. It could be really any kind of an inter interface that communicates with the back end. Could be a database or a web server. The front end processor sends and receives requests to the back end. Being that we're talking about the client server system, I want to talk a little bit about Google Docs. Now, this would be more on the back end of the system, the server system. Recently, I was in a group. There were four of us. We were at the University of Wisconsin Superior and we were all working on a project for the basketball team there and we ultimately had to create a computer program that would allow the team to track their stats in real time now since the four of us had issues coordinating our schedules like most people do we couldn't get into the lab all at the same time so what we were able to do is all sign into Google Docs and it was a great means of communicating with each other our progress this is a form of a back-end processor. The four of us were the front end, the clients, and what we would do is we would all log in and we would communicate our progress with each other and we would all edit the same document. This is a great way to collaborate. What we did is we broke the project down into parts. We each were assigned a part. And then what we would do is we created one doc or document through Google Docs and we all would update our progress on one document. We didn't write actual computer code, we wrote pseudocode, meaning it was similar, it didn't have all of the exact syntax of the actual script. But when you write the pseudocode it allows you to kind of outline the project as a whole before you actually get started coding. And I remember even there were a few different functions we had to write and it was a really nice way to write the function, upload it to the Google Doc, and then we could all log in, copy the function, and then actually run it in our individual programs. And it, it worked really well. I remember we could all edit the same documents in real time, comment back and forth, and we could share our ideas without shuffling of multiple files. I would recommend Google Docs it was such an easy experience and like I said it just it made us um, work more efficiently and it made our collaboration efforts better now when talking about the client server system there are also different programming languages now some are exclusive to the client side or the server side for the client side I'm gonna talk a little bit about JavaScript JavaScript is a client-side scripting language, meaning the code only runs on the client's machine. There are many uses for JavaScript in web programming. I find myself using it more so for basic form validation. Now remember again, JavaScript does not run on the server side. So I like to use it on the client side when I'm validating web forms. 
what I mean by this is I like to check a web form before it's submitted and I like to make sure that it passes all of my validation checks. This script could run a series of checks checking for null values, checking for proper data types. Uh, you could check the length of the data. To me, the most important check is to check security. Check for that malicious code that someone could try to insert into your form, have it submitted, and cause damage to your server, crashing your website and um, causing harm to possibly the entire network. Programming Development Frameworks. This is an interface that programmers use to write their programs. There are many features of these frameworks. One of them is a built-in compiler. Makes it very convenient, compiles the code, and what that means is it turns these, the high-level programming code and it converts it down to machine code, allowing it to run on your system. Another thing is these frameworks come um, with an imported library of all the classes associated with that programming language. Now there are many different frameworks available out there. I've used a couple of them. I've used the Visual Studio Library. I wrote C Sharp and Visual Basic. And also for my Java programs I used um, NetBeans. Also the powerful debugging capabilities that these frameworks come with. It's so nice you can write all of your script and these frameworks will analyze your script and they will debug it for you. I also found very convenient the auto complete feature and again just having those imported classes. I felt it saved a lot of time not having to manually compile. I'm going to talk a little bit about web-based databases. PHP. Pre-hypertext pre-processors, I believe the acronym. Anyway, this is a very effective server-side scripting language. And what that means is it does not run on the client side. You can't do it. It needs to run on an Apache server. And I have found a program that I can run on my local side, ultimately building a virtual Apache server. This is such a vital part of creating dynamic websites, this PHP code, because it has so many different features. I feel PHP is probably more relevant than ever, seeing the current nature of the web. Everything is data-driven and we use SQL databases to store our data for a lot of our sites. There are many popular websites written in PHP. Just a few of them include Facebook, Wikipedia, Flickr, Yahoo, and WordPress. And now with WordPress, I gotta say too that WordPress is such a um, popular platform for hosting websites. I read a stat that now we're up to 23% of the web is run on the WordPress platform. And if WordPress is written in PHP, you can just see how important this scripting language is. Well, I want to thank you for tuning into my presentation today. I hope you found this information useful to you.